Welcome, welcome to the Sharpway Show. So happy to have you with me this evening. A little bit late, I know, a little bit past 8 p.m. on the East Coast. But I was deciding whether or not I want to do this show or not. And part of me was like, let it go, let it go. But I've been letting so many things just go because is it worth it? Yelling and screaming, hooping and hollering. I thought, you know what? Maybe I should say something about this one because I got bothered. And boy, yeah, I, I got bothered about this one. There were so many little things that happened and then they all started to pile up. And then I said, you know what? I got to say something. And that is the idea that this year, this year, they finally figured it out. The mainstream media, and I'm happy that this happened, the mainstream people in general have figured out that in reality, this is a serious election for them. Not the one for us, right? The most important of our lifetime. Not that that they might actually have a problem this year with third parties, with RFK Jr., with the Libertarians. They might actually have a problem because of our plan. And I know this because the attacks have come out. You might go, Larry, did they're attacking again? They always attack. They don't know any better. All they know, the only tool they have is a hammer, so everything's a nail, and that's what they do. This is what I think is happening more than anything. And by the way, you know it's going to be a good one. I'm going to show you like, Six different videos. The odds are I'm getting demonetized tonight because someone's going to just take away what someone's going to copyright me or whatever. I mean, that's just kind of the way it is usually. So I'm probably going to get demonetized tonight in some way, shape or form, which <laughs> sadly happens far too often. That's the worst part is it does happen far too often. So if, if you guys want to hook me up, do me a favor, click the like button. The like button at a minimum will allow people to just like like this and maybe I'll get something. We'll see. So click the like button if you would. If you follow me on Twitter, please retweet this right now or X, re-X it, whatever the case may be. While we're talking, you want to super chat me. You always can super chat me if you're watching me on YouTube. And if you want to, you can become a member on YouTube if you like. 49 per month keeps this going as long as possible. First off, I want to bring back someone who I know many of you, you missed. You missed her. I know you did. So I'm bringing it back just for you, the one, the only. I'm actually going to bring back for you Hillary Clinton. Yes, she has returned. Hillary Clinton is here. Let me see if I can grab her screenshots. You can see her. And there she is. She's returned. She is here on Jimmy Fallon. And what did she have to say about all these? Let's see if I got it right at the right time. Force fed to get the right to vote, right? Oh, no, this is the wrong piece. I have to go back a bit. I apologize. Let me pull this off. I went a little bit. I was, I was so busy listening to her garbage the other day. I have to actually go to the right spot real fast. Her spot's a little bit earlier, right, if I could. A little bit earlier. Let me see if I can find this spot real fast. Okay. Here we go. This is the part that I want you to actually say. I apologize for that one second. Now it's about, again, I was spending so much time watching this, and I had to stop from throwing up. So that's, that is my excuse. I had to stop from throwing up. And here we go. We have to. We have to. No, no more Easter Bunny talk. Yeah. I mean, it's it's Biden versus Trump. Yes, we know that. It what, is. Oh, it is. What, right? It's Biden versus Trump. It is. It is. So you guys accept what this. Do you, what do you say to voters who are upset that those are the two choices? See that now? She is a seasoned politician, right? Been around this game for decades. So when someone asks her a question like, well, when you get this, right? When you get... Um, there's two, only two options. What do you say? Clearly she'll have some kind of nuanced, specialized answer. Of course she will, right? Get over yourself. Those are the two choices. <laughs> yeah, yeah, love that. Right? And, yeah, and good. you know. And Jimmy Fallon's like, yeah, good. So her answer is get over yourself. You don't matter. Us elites, we're the ones who matter. We have given you the two people that we have decided to be true, these are the people you deserve. Get over yourself, you plebs. What is wrong with you? I have given you the command, do as I say. This type of privilege is insane. And she yelled at it, and here's Jimmy Fallon. Yeah, good, yeah. If his nose was any further up her ass, 
he would be smelling her tonsils. That is how far it is up her derriere, without question. He's clapping. Uh, it's kind of like one is old uh -huh. and yes. effective and compassionate, yeah. has a heart, and really cares about people. Which, which, which one is that? I don't know which one that one is. <laughs> one is, has a heart. Is that the one who wrote the crime bill that put those black people in jail? Or the one who said that if his kids were to be bust into a black neighborhood, they'd be in a jungle? Is that, is that the one who had compassion? Is that, is that the one? Is that the one who is sending money to all over the world to bomb people? Is that the compassion one of heart? I don't remember which one it is. I forgot which one it is. And one is old and has been charged with 91 felonies. <laughs> Does he also have a heart? He's compassionate, though. I don't know. Okay, interesting. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't understand why this is even a hard choice, really. Yeah. And that point right there bothers me so much. Why does this bother me so much? Did I expect her to say anything else? No, not really. Right. But how flippant she is, recognizing one important thing: there are people who can't pay their bills, who can't pay their rent who can't pay for food, who can't pay for their health care, who cannot survive there, who are struggling, who are one accident away from bankruptcy. And she's like, you know, it's easy choice. Is it? I don't understand yeah. it, that we have to go through the election and hopefully people will. You know, look at her. We got to go through this stupid election, right? She's already, she's told you who the king is. Why won't you guys accept your, God, accept your place? Realize what's at stake because What's it's it an take? existential uh, question. Existential. Uh, what kind of country we're going to have, what kind of democracy we're going to have, and people... Okay, we don't have a democracy. This is what... See, for someone like her, it's fine, because in reality, most people who diss this like it's not a big deal, they are privileged. Yes, I'm using a left word. I hope it makes the people on the left get angry at that, that I stole it from them, because I did. Yes, they are privileged. You are privileged because it doesn't matter for her who wins. If Trump wins or Biden wins, she's fine. It doesn't matter to her. And guess what else? The rest of us, we're screwed, no matter who, whoever wins. Status quo is on her side. Status quo is for the privileged. That's why she wants it. And the worst part is there are people in that audience right now, in the audience right there, who are sitting here going, yay, yay. And they're going to go home, I'm not joking, to three roommates. They're going to go home to three roommates because they can't afford rent on their own. They're going to get up early in the morning and go to work to a job that they can't stand. So they can go, yeah, let's keep the same garbage going. And she sits there and looks at you. She says, one is compassionate. Who? She's compassionate? Who's compassionate? I'll blow that off or not paying attention because That's... it's not like Trump, his enablers, his empower. See that? You guys aren't paying attention. So not only is she saying you guys are, are not only are you guys stupid, but you're also ignorant. You're not paying attention. You guys work in two jobs to pay your bills. What is wrong with you? You should be listening to what Hillary Clinton's telling you. Oh my God. His allies are not telling us what they want to do. I mean, they're pretty clear about what they kind are. of country they want. Yeah. Yeah. So. Get out there. And so are you. And vote. Get out there vote, and vote. Which is a good... Well, that's what this is. Oh, I love that. This is my favorite one. Get out there and vote. Because you know what they care about? Hillary Clinton. What she cares about and what Jimmy Fallon cares about is that you vote. That's what they care about. But that's not true. You got to vote the right way. Vote my way. This is, I wish they would just say it, right? I wish they would just come out and just say it. Vote for my guy or, I guess as Joe Biden would say, the compassionate one with the heart, you ain't black. Right? So that's how it works. Anybody who wants to be black, you have to vote for Biden. Biden said so. He is our king and our lord and master. We must do as he says. And she finds no problem with this. And that's the part that has always driven me cr crazy. No problem with it whatsoever. Now you might go, well, Larry, that's just, right? That's just Jimmy Fallon. He's just kissing up because he wants to keep his job, which is true. And he now is part of the elite. So he's good. So his system, he's good to go. He's done. You might go, that's it. Well, wait, there is actually more. Let me see if I can grab a little bit of this one. I think you might enjoy this one too. I, I, I hope you guys will. This is how some people on the amazing show, which I know you guys love, also, also love, the show is called The View. The View also saw this. What do you think The View thought of this? Now, you would think, well, wait a minute. They're talking about this, so they must be unhappy with what Hillary said, 
right? They weren't happy. I'm sure they are. They weren't happy. We'll be going back. Yesterday's me. Wisconsin primary had more than 47,000 protest votes. Ooh. So is there still a lot of campaigning left to do? Yep. Um, she said the quiet part out loud. I don't necessarily disagree with what she said, but uh, get over yourself, 2020. Literally, this is this woman is supposedly a Republican. That that's what she says, and she says I don't disagree with what she says. She doesn't, because she also is a privileged person. It doesn't matter if you're a Democrat or Republican. If you're privileged, you're good. Some of you might say to yourself, "Wait a minute, Larry. Democrats don't want Trump to win." That's not true. No, no, no. Average Democrats don't. But elite Democrats could care less if he wins. If he wins, good for them. They get to yell orange man bad for the next four years. They don't have to think about anything. They just go orange man bad for four years. You think elite Democrats care if Trump wins? They don't. If Biden wins, they stay in power. If Biden loses, they get to yell orange man bad for four years. Win-win. Does not matter. And all the districts, they're all gerrymandered anyway. Everyone's going to still get their seats. So the leadership doesn't care at all. The leadership doesn't care at all. Trump wins, good. He doesn't win, good. Now, the average Democrat hates Trump and wants Trump to lose. But the elites don't care. The Republicans, like her, she doesn't care. What does she care? That's why she's going, yeah, you know what? Let's just, yeah, let's do it. 24 is not a great campaign slogan. She's, really not, put that she's, on not, she's not running. Yeah. No, but I, I'm running. saying she's a surrogate. for. I think she's supporting she's Biden. Strong. She wants to reach out to his voters. I think she's supporting Biden. Really? What'd you get? Hmm. Yeah, she's brilliant. She's on to something, I think. Um, here's the thing. Based on Michigan and Wisconsin results, we know that the protest vote, the sort of ceasefire kind of votes yes. in Michigan, were more than the margin of victory that Joe Biden won Michigan yeah. in 2020. So these, this is very real. And I think that- It is real. So what do you think you should do? If you accept that that's real, what should you do? Well, one would think, maybe change my policies or- Maybe change my messaging or maybe shift or change something else, perhaps. Or you can yell and scream at people for being stupid. They pick that one. Now, my point is, why is this on The View? Why is this on Jimmy Fallon? Why is this even a thing? Now, I know what you might say, Larry, you know, they always. No, they don't. They don't. This wasn't happening in 2016 when Gary Johnson was running, argued, arguably one of the, the best chances with Bill Weld to have real impact, wasn't happening. They weren't doing that. Wasn't happening in 2020 when it was a close race. They didn't know who was going to win. It was going to be Biden or Trump. They weren't doing it then. They weren't yelling about that. And we had other people, Green Party, and we had Libertarians running in 2022. No. No, wasn't happening. So what has changed? What's this magical difference now than before? They're actually afraid that third parties might have impact. Bobby Kennedy Jr. is one of them and the biggest one they're afraid of. But he has the same plan. And that plan is to actually win electoral votes. Same plan as Lars Mapstead, libertarian. Now, the Greens, look, if I have a choice between the two knuckleheads running or any of the independents running, RFK, Lars Mapstead, any of the libertarian, they haven't picked a, um, a, a, a candidate yet. I'm saying Lars because he has the same plan as RFK Jr or uh, the Green Party, or which is Jill Stein, or um, Cornell West. I would pick any of them over the four. Any of them. And you might, some of you are going to create that last crazy. I can't go with this one or that one. They're, no, no. Any of them I would pick. And why do I tell you that? Because there's a whole lot of Americans like me thinking exactly the same thing. Anybody but Biden, anybody but Trump. There's a lot of people thinking that now, more than ever. More than ever. We know this. That's why they're worried. And we go, well, that's just lefties scared of Trump. Mm -mm -mm. No, I have someone else who I want to bring to your attention, if I may. And this is someone who um, he's on the right. And he said, this is Clay Travis, one of the most, one of the most popular right wing um, pundits, uh, pundits, radio talk show, whatever you call. There is one of the most popular. And this is what he has to say. Not to say Trump's perfect. Certainly, he grew the size of the federal oh, government. I'm in Tennessee. Again, I feel like I can vote third party whenever I want, and uh -huh. I don't impact the outcome of any race on a national See level. That? that is so he thinks that he can vote third party when he wants because it doesn't affect the outcome of a race, and that, of course, in his eyes, is the only reason 
to vote third party is Trump is going to win Tennessee, my state. I'm going to vote for him. But if I were inclined. Now, he literally said there is no reason, none, that that he can vote for whoever he wants and Trump will still win. And then he says, my state, I'm going to vote for him anyway. He just said that. Make sure you understand. He said that. To vote third party, it wouldn't matter because it's the difference between Trump winning by 30 or 33. It's not changing the overall trajectory. Changing the overall trajectory. But if you're in okay. a swing state and you vote third party, in my opinion, yeah. you are not making an adult decision. Because- now, he just said, you're not an adult. So every one of you who voted for Gary Johnson, Jill Stein, um, who voted for Joe Jorgensen, who voted for Howie Hawkins, your children in his eyes. This is the right now coming at you. I just showed you the left. This is the right now insulting you. You're not making an adult decision. You're you're a child because you won't do what I want. Why? Because he is also privileged. He is also privileged. It doesn't matter who wins. He keeps his radio show. He keeps making his millions. Everyone who's been talking so far goes back to their multi-million dollar home, their massive cars, their great contracts. They're fine. They're not struggling to pay bills. There's no chance of them having any problems whatsoever. So of course he can say stupid shit like this to you, you plebs, you pores. It's your fault. Because part of life is making difficult choices. Thanks, Dad. And you may not like Joe Biden, and you may not mm-hmm. like Donald Trump, yeah. but if you're in a toss-up state, in yeah. my opinion, you have to sack up and make a binary choice. See, I got to sack up and make a binary choice. I don't have to sack up and tell this system to go take a fly and leap. Because that will be okay. He see he doesn't he thinks sack up means be a duopoly cuck, which is what he is. That's what he thinks. See, you gotta sack up because I'm a cool guy. Cause I just vote for the Republican, even though my state's gonna go Republican no matter what. That's what this idiot says. And if you're a libertarian, I think 80% of them would prefer Trump over Biden. Not to say Trump's perfect. Certainly he grew the size of the federal government. And I understand yeah. and get those emails all the time. But I th- Yeah, because he did. Yes. I think you are behaving in a childlike fashion. He literally has a picture of baby Finster. He literally has a picture. How can you support this guy? For all of those you guys who are right-leaning, who watch his show or listen to his radio show, he has a picture of a baby. He's calling you a child because you think for yourself. If you don't do as he says, you are a baby. This is the crap we're dealing with now. Was it that bad in 2020? It wasn't. Was it that bad in 2016? It wasn't. It's this bad because they are afraid. This guy's scared. The status quo might be broken. And all of a sudden, if his status quo is broken, he might lose his job. If he can't do left, right, evil, which is what his entire show is. If Jimmy Fallon can't do left, right, evil, it's his entire show. If Lee Clinton has to actually have policies versus just Trump evil, she'd have to actually have some policies and say something that makes some sense. She did not do that either. If the view had to actually think of something that made sense, they don't want to do that either. The left-right paradigm makes sure none of them have to think. None of them have to do anything. That's why they shame you. This is just shaming language. Shame on you for not doing as we say. You're dumb. You're stupid. You don't know any better. How dare you vote for the libertarians. How dare you vote for RFK Jr.? How dare you vote for the Green Party? How dare you think outside this two-party system? You're a child. You got to sack up. You're not a man. What is my girlfriend yelling at me? When I was 18 years old, 70 years old, my girlfriend yelling at me? No. No. I will vote for whom I want because that's what the Constitution says. These guys who tell you, oh, it's about democracy in the Constitution. You know what? Hillary Clinton talked about this. She, has a, she was actually on Jimmy Fallon's show talking about some plays she's part of. She's making some money, hawking some plays. Of course, she's hawking cash. I get it. I'm not mad at her. I'm sitting there telling you, you know, give to me too. So I'm not mad at you hawking. I'm not. What I'm mad about is she's saying, well, you know, they fought for our democracy. Do you think those women who were fighting for suffrage, who were getting arrested, going to jail, getting beat up by cops, do you think they did that? So they go, you know what I'd like to do? I'd like to be forced into voting for one person only and have no actual choice. I don't think that's why they did that. I'm guessing here, but I think they didn't. There were no ballots being printed back then. But as you don't know, there weren't ballots being printed. You just wrote for whoever you wanted to put in. You wrote it, and they counted it. Let me say that again, and it's going to sound crazy. What used to happen 
is you would write down the name of the person that you want to vote for, put it in a box, then they would count that vote. Nuts, I know, crazy, but that's how it used to work. Now it doesn't work that way. Now they decide who are the approved candidates that you may vote for, and they call it democracy. Then what they also do is they gerrymander everything to decide who's going to win, then they call it democracy. That's how that works. But if you don't like that, well, clearly, you're a baby. If you are in a swing state and you vote third party. I'm in Tennessee. See that? That's how he actually feels. He believes that. He says that. You think, well, that seemed pretty bad. But I'm not done. Oh, no, no, I, I, I'm not done. He has, he has more. He has more. See if I can get one more out of here, if, the, if, the, if I can find one more. I don't know if I can or not. Hold on, let me see if I can grab one more for you guys. You, you might enjoy this one too. Hold on, let me see if I can grab one more for you. It's a little bit, it's a little bit off, but it talks, it talks about it again. He's just mad again at you. He's mad again at you. Here we go. Let's see if I get him going. If you live in a swing state and you would vote for Donald Trump, but you are mad at Trump because you voted for DeSantis or you voted for whoever you did. And as a yep. result, you're going to vote for RFK Jr. Or Jill Stein or Carnell West or whatever third party candidate is out there. You are effectively people. voting for Joe Biden. You just don't have the balls to do it. I think anybody who votes See for that? Joe Biden is an imbecile based on. That's your problem. That's your problem, Joe. You just don't have the balls to straight vote for Biden. That's what he just said. So if you don't vote for Trump, you're voting for Biden. But if you vote third party, that's because you're a coward. This is what the thing, shaming language. You're a baby. You're a coward. Hillary Clinton, you're stupid, uneducated, not paying attention. So they think the answer is attacking and shaming voters, not making better candidates or fixing the system. It is shaming their voters. You know the worst part is? We put up with it. And here's, the, of all the worst parts, we copy. We copy. So now, because I've been listening to this guy on the radio, the next time some guy goes, I'm thinking about voting for RFK. Oh, you should vote for Biden. You just got no balls, you coward. That's what I'll say if I watch him. If I watch Jimmy Fallon, they'll go, I'm thinking about voting for the Green Party. Green Party? Oh, my God. Don't you pay attention? What do you, it's the most important of my lifetime. That's what they're going to say. You were going to hear these talking points and people yelling at you, calling you names, trying to make you feel stupid trying to make you feel dumb and saying some of the most stupidest things you've ever heard. And I got to go down one more. See if I can find this one, the right one. This is, this was a piece on, um, actually, I got this actually from The Hills Rising. They found this piece and I'm, I'm swiping it from them. It's talking about, um, it's just, this is actually Morning Joe trying to find a reason to be angry at RFK Jr., because of MLK, I'm not joking. There's somebody named Kennedy is putting himself in a position mm -hmm. to elect Donald Trump president, a guy. Now, how is that possible? That Clay Travis just told me, if you vote for RFK, you're voting for Biden. Didn't he just tell us that? He just told us that. I, did you hear him? The, a vote for RFK Jr. is a vote. For, for Biden is what Clay just told us. But now, this knucklehead, this, this, this moron, he's telling us, oh, well, no. No, this Joe Scarborough's got, got the right answer. A vote for RFK is actually a vote for Trump. Wait a minute. Which one is it? Which one is it? I have an idea. How about I get to vote for anybody that I want to vote for, regardless of what you think, and the vote that I put in if I vote for RFK, if I vote for Lars Mapstead, if I vote for Cornell West, that's a vote for RFK, Lars Mapstead, or Cornell West. That's not a vote for Biden or Trump. And we know it's bullshit because they both said the opposite thing. No, none of them is actually saying, hey, vote for my guy because my guy's awesome. My guy's going to help. My guy's going to make your life better. No, vote for my guy because otherwise you're stupid. This guy talked about, is talking about that too. Who? whose life now is dedicated to reversing the work of Martin Luther King and Bobby Kennedy. So his life now is dedicated to reversing MLK and RFK. I, I don't remember 
when either Bobby Kennedy Jr. or Trump said either of those two things. And you can hate Trump. You can hate RFK Jr. You can. No worries. Up to you. Don't vote for him. You like him. No worries. But do either of you think, you know what? They wake up in the morning. How, how can I trash MLK's legacy today? None of them say that. He says this again. Shaming. Shame on you if you would do that. Shame on you. That part. Look, I'm not a Robbie Sobey fan, but that's the, that is absolutely the appropriate face. That is the appropriate face. I give him that. It's the appropriate face. I got to say that. It is, it is definitely that. And that part, you might go, wait a minute. Okay. And, and I had to go, that was, that was um, uh, the Hill. And they were going nuts. But there's another piece here. And the piece here is why I put the two pictures that I put up on this thumbnail is because what they're really scared of, and here's how I'm sure, this is the part, <clears throat> this was the part that pushed me over the edge, making me say something. Some of you may or may not know, but in Nebraska now, the governor has decided that he's backing this idea of ending the, um, the, the, the winner, to, I'm, I'm sorry, of ending the splitting of the electoral votes, right? For those of you who don't know, in Nebraska, they split the electoral votes into three groups. Right, so you could win one here or one here or the whole state, whatever the case may be. You can win different parts of the state. And that's fine, it's legal, you can do if you want to. Maine does it also. Lars Mapstead has been talking about this his entire campaign. Now, I've been talking about this since 2016. I was fighting this issue, I'm not joking. For those of you who remember me, I, I tried to become the vice president, Gary Johnson's vice president candidate in 2016. I lost to Bill Weld by 31 votes. I'm not counting, who keeps counting? I'm not counting, shut up, you're counting. I lost with 31 votes. So when I lost that, that election, one of the reasons why I wanted to be his VP is so I could push them into going for an electoral vote. That campaign raised $13 million, more than any Libertarian can, a, a party um, campaign had ever raised. What even, and I knew they raised a lot of money because Bill Weld had a bunch of money. One of the reasons why Bill Weld was the VP. I thought you got that kind of money, you shove it into like Maine. or I thought at that time, New Mexico. For those of you who don't know, Gary Johnson was the governor of, Mex of New Mexico. So I thought New Mexico would be a good plan. That was my plan back in 2018, right? Uh, 2016, I lost, they didn't do it. 2020, they didn't do it. I gave the advice to the Jorgensen campaign, didn't hear me. But who's saying, talking about that now? Who is? <laughs> who's chatting about that now? Robert Kennedy Jr., Lars Mapstead. Those are the two talking about it right now. And I said, does that really matter? It does because that's what this is happening. That's what this is happening. And this here, I'm gonna give you both of them. This here is Bobby Kennedy Jr. talking about this a while ago. This wasn't like just five minutes ago, it was a while ago he was speaking about it. This is him and his plan. And why does it matter, to be clear? The reason why this matters is because this is the, the idea is a stop 270. That's the idea behind this, right? The idea is, the idea is you can stop 270, meaning neither Trump or Biden gets 270, then it goes off into the um, it goes off into the, um, the 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 Congress and the Congress can pick the president, right? And whoever comes in third might actually win as a compromise candidate. Happened in eighteen twenty four. Also happened with Thomas Jefferson. Here is Bobby Kennedy Jr. talking about it. If the if it goes to if none of no candidate gets two hundred and seventy votes, it goes to a contingent election. Yep. In the contingent election, the Senate chooses the vice president and the House chooses the president. But according to the rules, the Twelfth Amendment, each state gets one vote. Right. And the one congressional vote. delegation has to agree on it. And if you actually look at the uh, the composition of the congressional delegations. There's no way that they'll be able to agree on it. Democrats are never going to vote for Trump. And yes. The Republicans are never going to vote for Biden. Or they'll lose it. Thank you. This is the part I wanted you all to hear. This is hit from his mouth. Republicans are never going to vote for, for Biden. Democrats are never going to vote for Trump. This is an actual path to victory. And they are scared of this. This is the key piece. This is the key piece. This is the key piece. Now, I got to go one step further, if I can, see if I can find this piece. This actually is, this is Lars Mapstead speaking about it also, but he was speaking about it on Michael Smirconish's show recently also. A lot of people that are libertarian or libertarian leaning that are in politics today, but we can win. And right now what I'm pushing for is 
to deny both Trump and Biden the 270 electoral votes needed to win and cause a contingent election under the Constitution. And I'm working with uh, people like the No Labels Party, with the Kennedy uh, campaign, with the Green Party, to try to win enough electoral votes to deny both of these guys and send it to the House of Representatives to decide who's going to be the next president of the United States. Right, but then... There we go. There we go. Two people talking about this. Not one. Mainstream. Michael Smokanish, mainstream. News Nation, mainstream. Mainstream is hearing this, and they're all talking about it. They're talking about contingent elections. They're talking about this thing happening, and they're scared. And they're scared. This is why they're doing it, because this is a real thing. And some of you go, Larry, come on. Do you think this is real? Yes, it is. Kurt knew this right there, contingent election, and this is before I even said it. He knew about it. And I got to tell you, I am so insanely happy. Why? I've been pushing this since 2016. Nobody's been talking about it. There has been more talk about ballot access in this last year on mainstream, on every place that we possibly could talk about it than the last 50 years combined every libertarian ever run. First time I'm talking about con- t- contingent election in years. I can't remember talking about it before, except me trying to get people to believe it in 2016 and 2020 and no one listening to me. Finally, it's here. This is why they're scared. It's not because Trump this, Biden that. It's because they're recognizing this might be the game. This might be it. Now, let me bring up a, a piece of like, this is, this one's from Breaking Points. They're talking about the idea of, um, oh, so again, yeah, they're talking about, the, they're showing, they're actually showing what happened on MSNBC and what they talked about when it comes to this contingent election. And they're almost laughing about it as of course they would. Let me grab this real fast. so You can see this one too. To rely on, you take away that single electoral vote. Now, a single electoral vote isn't usually something that you should be all up in arms. Yes, you're right, Sagar. A single electoral vote isn't something that you would usually be concerned about at all. Usually you would not be concerned about it. Why not? I don't get it. Why would you not care about, about something like that? Well, hmm, could it be because this year someone else might win it? Because this year, the two people talking about it, RFK Jr. and Lars Mapstead, one of those two might actually get one of those votes? I think that's the reason. It's about, but it was one that's very critical for some 270 math in a very, very tight race. For Jim- Now, this is the thing. This is the lie they're going to tell you. The lie they're going to tell you is it's because it's a 270 and a tight race. Were they not afraid of a tight race in 2016? They were. Were they not afraid of a tight race in 2020? They were. In both cases, they were tired of that. They were, they was, they, they were worried about it. Of course they were. But not just that. Was Nebraska considering ending this during those two years? They were. Did the governor want to get behind it? He did not. So again, in 2016 and 2020, there were tight races both times. They were worried about that. They were afraid of it, of course. And they were considering getting rid of it, did they? No. Did the governor back it? No, not at all. What is different this year? Ah, different people running, right? No, it's Trump and Biden. Again, same people running. What's changed? Only one thing. Contingent election. Joe Biden, even those over at MSNBC are now beginning to take notice. Let's take a listen. Governor there has thrown his support behind an effort that would no longer allocate the electoral votes by congressional district. Because right now, it's five votes there. Technically, Republicans get four. Whenever you watch these guys on these shows like that, you should think privileged. I'm not joking. Every one of them has gone to a high Ivy League school. Every one of them has no problem paying their bills. Every one of them somehow brings in tons of money, goes back to a multi-million dollar house, every one of them. And they're going to sit there and tell you how dumb you are. Or in President Biden, Democrats get the one from Omaha. That's right. If that changes, and we don't know that it will, it's the state legislature is going to look at it. But right. if that changes... That takes away Biden's best path to win because if you get. So all of a sudden, what he just said is that one vote takes away Biden's. That's what he just said. Takes away Biden's best chance to win. How? Why? Because you say so? No, that is to scare Democrats, right? That is to scare Democrats. By the way, Republican governor. So Republican wants to close it off to get rid of it. And Democrats, too. Why would Democrats and Republicans both want that? Hmm. 
They usually hate everything the other one likes. Why? Oh, because that gets rid of the third party. I want you to imagine, all of you, I know some of you watching don't like RFK Jr. I know some of you don't like Lars Mapstead. I know some of you don't like Cornell West. Some of you don't like Jill Stein. But just for a moment, imagine if one of them, any one of them, the one you like, I don't care which one it is, that one wins Omaha. And all of a sudden, there's that color, gold, green, purple, whatever's the color. That's on the map. Now, obviously, I'm biased. I want libertarians to win, obviously. So I hope it's gold. But whatever that is, I'm, I'm going to say, what if it isn't? What if it's Jill Stein, the Green Party wins, and she gets one up there? If Jill Stein actually won Vermont or a piece of Maine or a piece of Nebraska, do you understand how it validates all third parties, all independent parties? Lars Mapstead wants to win uh, a chunk of Maine or a chunk of Nebraska. Imagine if he does. Every single third party is validated from that. Bobby Kennedy Jr. is working on Arizona. He's working on Georgia. As he wins one of those, opens it up for every single third party. It makes us real. It changes the system, which is what matters. I know some of you are going, but Larry, you understand. We can't have Biden again. Who cares? Four years from now, you're going to have whatever, President Pence or whoever is the next guy on the President Cruz or whoever's the next guy. Oh, we can't have, you know, uh, uh, Trump at the world's going to So if you have Trump, so what? Four years later, you're going to have whatever, Pre President Harris or President AOC or whatever. It's just going to rotate. Never forget this. Whatever you might be thinking, never forget this important piece. Bush got us Obama. Obama got us Trump. Trump got us Biden. It just rotates back and forth and the decay continues if we don't break this system. I'm not the only guy who's figured this out. All of them have too, which is why the le I brought you left and the right, both of them saying exactly the same thing. Why would they be saying the same thing? Because it breaks the system and they know it and they don't want it. If he wins Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Yep. but loses the other swing states and no longer picks up the one in Nebraska, 269. Uh, that leads playbook this morning, the alarm among Democrats that this is possible. Yes, this part is true. The alarm among Democrats that they might actually not win the election, might go to continued election. That's true. Yes. And people are talking about it. What do you think? I think this is what the modern Republican Party has become. They're now changing the rules in the middle, trying to benefit themselves. This is the, the hell that Donald Trump hath wrought. Uh, in but you just heard the Democrats say the same thing. Why is it only the hell that Trump has wrought? The Republicans are bad. No, no, no. You know who changed the rules in the middle of the cycle also in New York State in 2020 during the cycle that I got ballot access? It was Democrats. They both change the rules whenever they see fit. They both crush the system whenever they see fit. Please don't tell like, oh, it's because Trump. No, it's because you guys are all part of the system. In the middle of this, changing the rules 200 days before the election is ridiculous. I think you're right. I think there are real uh, simulation problems. When you look sure. at the map, that one. There, there actually is some case law to say that you can't change it in the middle of an election. The problem is for a guy like me who runs, no one cares about me. I'm some dude in New York. They don't care. But someone like RFK Jr., which is why I'm so happy he's running this year. I know some of you don't like him. I'm happy he's running. Why? Because if he fights this battle, they'll pay attention. Why? Because he's a candidate. I wish that wasn't true. Right? I wish someone's last name and cash didn't matter. I wish that were true. But I think we're all being to uh, uh, Clay Travis's. We all can't be babies. We got to be real here. Cash and name does matter. I, I, went to, I, I went to court eight times. They didn't care about me. Supreme Court wouldn't see me. I'm some dude, you know, who has a podcast in New York City. They don't care about me. Bobby Kennedy, they care about him. Name, Cash. He will go to the top and there will be some rulings and maybe make some changes. It could actually happen. That's why I'm happy. Electoral vote really matters in the combination of other things. Then you need another state. No. Um, and so... The easiest pathway to victory has always been the Midwestern three states. Hold on. Um, Mike says, wait, in 2020, every Democrat state changed the election laws within the 90 days election. Yes. And if you remember the lawsuit that was against them was what I just said. There was some case law that said you can't do that. You're right. There are rules and regulations that stop that, Mike. They should not have done that.
Correct. But what did they do? They went, oh, it's virus time, lockdown, so we can remove all our rights and ignore all the laws. That's what happened. You were, uh, ah, Mike CEO was thinking. That's correct. That did actually happen in 2020. They changed all the rules. They should not have. But they said, well, it's lockdown time. It's the disease is going to kill everybody. So law, who needs laws and rules? We don't need that. We'll just do whatever we want. That's what happened. Shelly says, President AOC, shut your mouth. But you know, I'm not joking. That's the issue, right? Absolutely. Yes. So let me let me wrap this up real fast if I could. And Combined then we'll go back to with comments. Nebraska, um, something tells me they're not going to get away with it this easy, and there will I be a national outcry for trying to change the rules here. Okay, all right. Uh, Look at them laughing. Trying to, they're trying to change the rules middle of the game. There's going to be a national outcry over the Nebraska electoral right. delegation. Now this just shows how ignorant these two guys are. I don't think they're corporate media yet. I don't think they are. Right. I mean, maybe I don't know either of them personally, so it's possible the corporate media, but I don't think they're corporate media yet. They may become one day. Um, they might want to be. Who knows? I think they just don't get it. They don't understand. Will there be a national outrage? No, they didn't care. But no one had national outrage, outrage about me. Same thing happened to me. Nobody cared. That part's true. But again, my last name isn't Kennedy. I don't have tens of millions of dollars. Right. So they don't care about me. Him, they will care about. But not just that. Nobody was thinking, oh, my God, if Lattershot wins governor, the entire system is going to be broken. If a barrel shop shows in the ballot, the entire system will be broken. No one's thinking that. But they are thinking that if one of these guys is on the ballot and wins an electoral vote, the entire system is broken. So there will be something that will happen this time. It will First of all, okay, Jim Mathena. It's already weird, yes. Yes, weird that they do this. No, it's, it's weird. Can we all admit that? And that's why. No, it's not weird they do this. It's good they do this because it's fairer to the individual people in the state. You don't get that, though, because you, wearing your tie and all your stuff, are part of the system also. You like the system. You like the rules. Why? Because both of you are privileged. Both of you are privileged. You all go home to your wonderful house. No one's about you paying bills. You got a great job. Remember, all the people who think the system's fine the way it is, and let me be clear about this. If life is good for you and everything's awesome and you're making good money and your family's fine and you got your health care, nice house, nice everything, you're good, you probably should vote for Trump or Biden. You probably should. The status quo is hooking you up, right? So I get it. I'm not mad at you for that. The status quo is hooking you up. You do you. Right? You do you. I get it. But if you're upset, you're mad, things are going wrong, and you do, if, you're, if you lean left and like to vote for maybe Democrats or that kind of thing, and you listen to what Hillary Clinton tells you, what's wrong with you? How broken are you? And I mean that sincerely. How broken are you? If you go, well, I got to vote for Biden, right? Those people we just saw, Crystal Ball, she's voting Biden, guaranteed. Her and her oldest son, Kyle, are going to be voting Biden no matter what. They're voting Biden, guaranteed, guaranteed. They will talk trash about this and whatever. They're voting Biden, guaranteed. Why wouldn't they? Doing fine. Saga's voting Trump, guaranteed, no matter what. He's doing it. Of course he is, right? On the Hill. Sobey's right, voting Trump, of course he is. Now, Brianna Joy Gray, she hates the do-up, so she's probably going to be voting either Cornel West, Jill Stein, something. She's probably doing that. I wish she'd vote for my people, but she won't. But anyway, but she's going to vote. Fine. I'm good with her. She'll do that. The rest are not. The more you are status quo, the more things work for you, the more you should vote Democrat Republican. Otherwise, you should not vote. I got, <clears throat> sometimes I was on the Vanguard. Some of you know that show. It's a, a left-leaning show out of, I think, ooh, was it Kansas City? I think Kansas City. I'm not sure. Maybe St. Louis. I think it's out of Kansas, Kansas City. And they would tease me because I was saying, look, I would vote for Cornell West. Like, wait a minute, you're a libertarian. Why the hell would you vote for Cornel West? I said, if he was the only guy on the ballot besides the other two, I'd vote for him. Like, but you don't, but you're right. I, I do not agree with most of his policies. It's true. I don't. That's accurate. But nothing changes if we don't fix this system. And for those of you looking at me going, Larry, you're crazy. We got to make sure we have Trump because of blah, 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 or Biden because of blah, blah. You're wrong. You're wrong. In the last 24 years, last 24 years, the Republicans have controlled at one point all four of the big boys, state, I'm sorry, the Senate, the, Cong uh, the, the, um, the Congress, right, the House, the Senate, 
the Supreme Court and the presidency. The Democrats over the past 24 years have at least once controlled all four of those also. Okay, if you're a Democrat, did you get your Medicare for all? No. Did you get Roe v. Wade codified? No. If you're, if you're a Republican, did you get Obamacare repealed? No. Did you get the, the border war, uh, wall fixed? No. Did you get a balanced budget amendment? No. So if you're a Republican Democrat, you're not going to get what you want with this system. 24 years is proof of that. You're not going to get it. Break this system, you might get what you want. You might get what you want if you break this system. If you don't, you are not going to get what you want. Guaranteed, the system is broken. That was the piece I wanted to make sure we all heard. They're all running scared, all of them. This is a chance to actually make change. Before I go on, guys, please click the like button. I know I say it all the time. I'm bugging you to do it again. It does matter. This is probably going to be monetized. So at least let me get it shared around. If you're watching it on Twitter, if you haven't been watching on Twitter on X, repost this now. Re-X this, repost this, retweet this, whatever the case may be. Just do it so people can see it. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, you can super chat me if you want to. I'm going to go through comments in a second right now. But if you want to get a super chat, support the show. It's nice. If you want to just constantly support the show ongoing so I can keep doing more and more of this, no worries. Become a YouTube member. If, you, if you're watching on Larry Sharp YouTube, the join button, 49 per month, supports me uh, a lot. It's going to be awesome to me. Go to Patreon if you want to, patreon.com slash sharpway, 10 bucks a month, even more, because you love me even more. So do 10 bucks a month if you like, either one. Or just click the like button. That's free. Cost you nothing. 10 bucks or free or anything in between, all good. Let me go to some comments uh, if I could to grab some of these. So Joel started off. He says, vote X, a vote for X, a vote for Y. I showed you both sides telling you that. It was a lie both sides. It was a lie on both sides. Yes. Shelly says, Thursday is supposed to be about the queen, no? Eh, yes, but I wanted to do this one. You're right, Shelly. You're right. Yes. Joe says, remodel the bunker. Yes, different bunker. It's not a Quonset anymore. Now it's an actual deep, dark bunker. I'm getting scared. Absolutely. <clears throat> Dan asks, Larry, will you be speaking or attend the National Convention this year? I will be at the National Convention. I don't know if I'll be speaking. I might be speaking, but I will definitely be there for sure. Absolutely. Gene says, I'm so glad I can see you this evening. Gruß Gott. Thank you, Gene. Good seeing you. I'm glad you're here. Joe says, RFK Jr. for the LP. There are a lot of people who do want that, Joe. They are. I'm happy he's running. I don't know if I want him as our nominee. And I don't think he, I mean, I'm not sure if he put the right VP selection. I'm not sure about that. If you know what I'm saying? So, but I get it. I'm not mad. Right? A lot of people are mad at this when they say they get mad. Oh, I'm not mad. I'm not mad at it. I understand the logic behind it completely. I'm not mad at it. Just not saying I'm on board. I'm not mad at it, though. I'm not. Absolutely. Dan says, listening from New Jersey. Dan, thank you. It's been a while. I'm glad you were there. There we go. All right. Uh, Dave says, at Joel, translation, if you don't vote for my guy, you're a scumbag and it deserves to be doxxed. And you should vote for our guy for the rest of your natural life. Yes, that's accurate, Dave. Thank you. You got that completely. Yes. <laughs> that is correct. Tom is helping me out. He says, liking, commenting, and sharing on three platforms. Yes, for those you don't know, this is on Twitter. This is on, um, I'm sorry, or X. It's on YouTube. It's on Facebook. It's on Roku. Uh, a couple, of, I do this on like eight channels. So it's on a bunch of channels. So yes, absolutely. So <clears throat> Joe says, you're complaining about your dinner choices of shit or shit with sprinkles. Hillary, probably. It's, yeah. yeah. I think that's, yeah, that's kind of true. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Tom says, MSM, mainstream media, fears RFK Jr. because he can bring all the COVID madness on the debate stage. This, I got to tell you, <clears throat> this piece is one of the most exciting pieces that I hope that if, if RFK Jr. is able to get in the ballot in enough states, and I hope he can do it, if he's able to get on the debate stage, we'll have an actual debate. An actual debate. Look, I hope they get them all on. I hope Lars is on. I hope Jill Stein is on. I hope, you know, Kona, I hope they're all on. But the reality of it is, <laughs> the only person who can jaw people right now, <clears throat> and again, I, I hate saying it. I feel bad saying it, but I'm just being forward. The one that, that draws the people in is right now is RFK Jr. He does. If he's the reason, I'll take it. I'll take it. For those who don't know, 
Uh, he was at the uh, Libertarian Party of California's uh, convention earlier this year. People were mad about that. I wasn't. I was happy he was there. Why was I happy he was there? Because the mainstream media showed up. And I threw all of our candidates at every one of those reporters. And if you're there, you remember? How many people? I was, Here's our candidate. Here's, he brought the media. Our people got it. Many of our candidates were actually uh, quoted in the paper. Uh, Rechtenwald was quoted in the paper. Um, Termat was quoted in the paper. I forgot some others were too. I know the Hornberger, I think, was too. So a bunch were quoted. They were quoted. In, our candidates were quoted in the paper because Bobby Kennedy showed up. I'm not mad. I'm not mad. So, yes. All right. Let me see if I keep going here again. Shelly says, guess what I learned about MAGA? First used by Reagan. Then by Bill Clinton saying his wife would MAGA. Then by uh, author and 40 years later, Trump. Oh, look at that. We've all been trying to make America great again. RFK for LP. Another one. Yep, we have. I, the Libertarians, uh, libertarians for, for RFK were at the New York event. I don't know. Were they at the California event? I don't remember. I knew they were at the New York event. So, yes. All right. Frank says, I don't like any of the current choices. Me too, Frank. <laughs> Me too. I'm with you. Absolutely. There we go. Gene says, the only bill I can pay is the tax bill. Yeah, I heard that before. Absolutely. So it, it is definitely an issue. Uh, two Steps from Anywhere says, compassion versus felon. Sounds like latest 20 years of policy in Italy. You are finally catching up. See that? There we go. We're catching up. There we go. Sam says, uh, when will Hillary get us to be renamed as the People's Democratic Republic of, of America? Well, you know what? You la I laugh at that. However, you bring up a very valid point, Sam. What she's actually asking all of us to do, and some of you see this, is to accept a one-party democracy. Now, I'm going to say this because it's very important, a one-party democracy. I'm going to go right down to Godwin's law, right? Godwin's law, you go, everything ends up being Nazis, whatever. Yep, I'm going right there. Nazi Germany was not a dictatorship. It was a democracy. I'm not joking. It was a democracy. If you look at your homework, it was. It, was, it wound up becoming a one-party democracy, and it was a Nazi party. But yes, it was democracy. You got to vote. You did. You could vote in Nazi Germany. Of course. You can vote in North Korea. It's democracy, officially, right? Imperial Japan. Democracy. People voted the whole way through. They were all one-party democracies. Russia. Basically a one-party democracy. You can vote there, too. So she's basically saying, here it is a one-party democracy, take it and shut up. And again, if you're privileged and part of the elite, look, socialism and communism in the forms that we've seen throughout the last 100 years, 200 years, whatever it's been, has been great if you're on the right side of the gun, right? If you're, if you're on the pistol grip side of the gun, you're good. If you're on the barrel side of the gun, not so good for you. So these people are on the pistol group. They're on the rifle butt side of the gun. They're good. They don't mind. They're just fine. Sure. One party democracy, whatever. Dictatorship. Good. I'm on this side of the gun. No worries. You're up against the wall. I'm not. That's how they feel. And every one of those people, they're all privileged. And I use that on purpose. I am hoping that people see it and get upset. So yes, 100%. So let's see if I can grab some more of these. Missy says, please like the video. Thanks. Yes, Missy. She's correct. Please follow. Missy says she is correct. Yes, absolutely. Tom says, you're killing me, making me watch that crap. Tom, I watched the whole thing. I'm killing myself on this one. Well, oh, I can't say that. I'm unaliving myself. I'm going to wind up freaking getting, I'm, I, it's already demonetized. Who am I kidding? Uh, and it doesn't really matter what I say now. It's already demonetized. Of course it is. So yes, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm fooling myself. John McLaughlin says, Trump's the threat of democracy, yet Biden has been suppressing RFK for the last year. True, John, very good point. And his party has some of the most restrictive ballot access laws. Yes, yes, and yes. And that's the funny part, right? Uh, RFK Jr. Got in, got in trouble recently because he said that he could argue that Biden was more of a threat to democracy than Trump. And boy, CNN, they just lost their minds. They're like, you don't really mean that, do you? We've been spending the last X, what, six years now? We've been spending the last six years, eight years now, eight years. We've been, since 15, right? Oh my God, nine years. We've been spending the last nine years telling you that Trump is the evilest person on the planet, basically Hitler times eight, right? Is what we've been telling you for the past nine years. He's Hitler times eight. We've been saying that. You can't say that. Biden is not Hitler times nine. 
you're basically saying Biden's Hitler times nine. And he was like, yeah, well, kind of. And here is my issue. Can you say Trump is a bad guy? 100%. Can you say Biden's a bad guy? 100%. And to be forward with you, some of you may like Trump better or like Biden better, whichever you like better. Here's what I know. Biden's had a whole lot more time to create havoc and horribleness. Biden crime bill, mandatory minimums. That's all Biden. That's all Biden. He's an old enough. Biden was right there when it came to uh, the uh, Patriot Act. Uh, Trump wasn't even around at that point. He didn't care. Trump was, I don't know, building something, whatever. I don't, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, sleeping porn. So I don't, whatever he was doing, he was doing something. He didn't care about that. That was all Biden. Every time I saw afraid Americans do stupid stuff, Biden was right there signing on. So I'm not mad at RFK Jr. for saying that. I'm not mad. I, I can make the argument. I make the argument just now. I just did. Anybody, anybody who's paying attention, Miss Hillary Clinton, Madam Secretary, maybe could make the argument. I just did. I think anybody could. So, yes. So, all righty. Um, Andrew says, I certainly, I think, hope ballot access restored so we got the power to vote third party this year. Let's bring it back, folks. I agree. I agree 100%. Ballot access is critical. I want this to happen. Nick says, let's go, Larry. Thank you. I'm rocking and rolling, trying my best. 100%. Yes. Shelly says, we absolutely need ballot access in New York. Yes, I am putting together a pack. It's been so late. I've been asking people and people keep telling me yes. And then they keep not doing it. And then they keep not doing it. And they keep having excuses. I think finally I'm going to have a pack coming, I hope. And then I'm going to be bugging you guys to put money in it. I have some other people who put money in it. We got to put money in this thing so we can get ballot access in New York. It is not going to be easy, but we got to put cash in it. So I'm going doing my best to make this work. I got people who are now worried. Oh, Larry, you, you said you were going to get it up, and now you didn't get it. And, and I've been trying to. It is it is difficult. I'm older. It's tough getting things up sometimes. But yes, it was tough getting that pack up. It was. It's, it still is. It's difficult. People don't want to do it. They get scared. All the issues and worries. Then they tried, and you got to connect it to this, connect it to that. It's it's a lot harder than I thought it was going to be to make happen. But we haven't given up yet. I have not given up yet. So, yes. Thomas says, voting third party is the most peaceful way to get the DNC and RNC working for us um, instead of the people who pay them to write laws that profit the wealthy. Yes. And let me keep going if I could. There's a very important thing here that people aren't getting. This is why they're scared. They joke about that 70,000 people in Wisconsin who voted, you know, whatever, no contest or whatever they called it, or that 100,000 people in Michigan who voted uncommitted or whatever the case may be. I want you to realize this. That's 170,000 people who on a random Tuesday or Saturday, whenever the day was, decided to not watch Netflix or play their PS, their, their, their PlayStation or hang out with their buddies or, or scroll through TikTok or whatever it is that they're doing. They say, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to head on down to the polling station and I'm going to write in, I don't like Joe Biden, with what they're actually writing in. Knowing that's not going to stop Joe Biden. Knowing that this non committal is not going to win. They knew that. Literally free speech. I would argue, Thomas, that you are correct. 100,000 people voted for me in 2018. <laughs> Most of them knew I wasn't going to win, but they voted anyway. They got out of bed, didn't watch TV, didn't play on their phones, went to the polling station, went there and voted for me. Why? Protest vote. That is literally, literally your free speech. And you think the RNC and DNC care about you? They don't. They don't. Hillary Clinton just goes, one guy has a heart and compassion. Well, then why can't I vote for who I want to vote for? Why is the DNC literally, again, the DNC literally, why are they putting a billion dollars? You think I'm making this up to your own homework. Why are they putting a billion dollars into an entity so they can stop third parties? Again, that is common knowledge. You can just do a Google search. That's true. A billion. You think if I had a billion dollars and I was political, you would think I might spend that billion dollars in, I don't know, maybe making better policies or plans or helping people or having a better marketing message or building a better team. There are so many things you could do with that billion dollars or you could attack third parties, keep them off the ballot. You can sue Robert Kennedy Jr., probably Lars Mapstead or whomever else wins, Rectumwald, whoever wins, or maybe you're going to sue 
Uh, I'm sure they're going to. Sh- I'm sure they're going to sue um, Jill Stein. They're going to sue Cornell West, of course. So to spend their time throwing money in the courts to make sure that we spend time and money and energy on this, so we can't actually win a damn election. I know they did it to me, but this is Democrats now. Me, it was Republicans. They dropped hundred grand, throwing me off the ballot, making me drop hundreds of thousands of dollars on ballot access and losing. So yeah, they know what they're doing and they'll do it again. So yes, thank you. So Kurt goes on to say, only the most level-headed, free, level-headed, free-thinking people vote third party. I would agree, my friend. I would agree. Yes, 100%. That is great. So if I can grab a couple more of these. Um, Austin says, Larry, have you heard that Pennsylvania and Michigan voters do not like their choices for R&D. They could flip third party. Here is hoping for the LP, but they might go RFK due to name recognition. I think, again, I know a lot of people who don't like uh, Kennedy get mad about that. And I understand it. You don't like him. I got it. No worries. You don't have to like him. Understand the reality, though. He's popular. That's true. He's popular. He's not one of them. I'll take it. I'll take it. Right? I'll take it. So... Thank you also, by the way. Um, also, you went off to a, a nice uh, Super Chat, $5. Thank you, Austin, for the $5. My first Super Chat, Larry. GOP and Democratic Party in the U.S. version of Hartsburg Front. Ah, the Nazi and German Party, uh, German People's Party Coalition. What do you think? Ooh, interesting. No. No. <clears throat> ah, maybe. That's a tough one. You know, um, because I feel like the parties that connected with the Nazi party in Germany were openly connected, if that makes any sense. Like, it was obvious they were coalitions of some sort. It was obvious they were coalitions. In the case of the GOP Democratic Party, they're not obviously coalitions, right? I mean, they are, but they're not obviously coalitions. They are ostensibly enemies who hate each other, right? I don't think that was the case in the, in the case of Nazi Germany. So I see your point. My opinion would be different because of the image, the front that is created. Does that make sense at least? I hope that at least makes sense. If you disagree with me, I hope at least it makes sense. So, all right. Um, let me see if I can go back up to this if I can. Wow, um, a lot of comments. Well, I really appreciate all these comments. Holy cow. Let me see if I can grab some more of these if, that, if I can get through a couple of these if I could. Um, Mike says, I agree the establishment are fearful of losing power by having to compete for votes. If RFK and Libertarian uh, grab 20% of votes, that would produce results to retain power. Yes. And let me jump on that because if you heard what Lars Mapstead said on Smirconish's show, what he said is, I'm working with the other parties together to make this happen. That's the real deal. Right? Again, I'll go back to this. Imagine for a moment. And again, I'm making this up for sake of argument. I don't know if it's real or not. Let's say, uh, you know, either Cornel West or Jill Stein can win Vermont. I don't know if that's true. I'm, again, sake of argument. They get to win. They, they win Vermont. Lars Mapstead wins his Maine and Nebraska that he wants, right? So that Vermont's what, three or four electoral votes, whatever it is. Maine, Nebraska, two more. And now uh, RFK Jr. wins. I know he's been working in uh, Arizona and Georgia. He wins one of those two, right? He wins Arizona, whatever. I think it's 11 or something like that, whatever that is. Boom, that's like 15, 16 electoral votes. That's enough. It's enough. Goes to the Congress. Imagine, I want to say it again. Imagine if that happens. Imagine if that happens. If all of a sudden, now, it goes to the Congress. It's because third parties made that happen. Independent parties made that happen. Every single person who who wants to run locally as an independent party wins. Because now they go, no, no, we're real. Now they have to fight you. And this is the piece that, that people don't get. People often say this. And to be forward, sometimes the, the other parties screw this up. They go, I don't want negative press. Yes, you do. You want press. What you want to be is legitimate first. And this makes us all legitimate. Regardless of what you feel about libertarians or about RFK or about Greens or about Cornell West, regardless, it does work. So yes. Blue Moon, Red Vine, how are you? Yes, but RFK is controlled by the same Zionist globalists that control Biden, so really, who cares? Well, I think I've said why I care. I, I think I do. I think the, the representation, maybe it's the wrong word. Maybe the word is wrong that I'm using. 
Let me see if I can use a better word that may make it clearer. The outcome that any independent party being on that debate stage, being on that ballot, making impact, regardless, is going to help all other independent parties. That's why I care. That's why I'm glad he's running. I'm not mad he's running. People go, oh, he's mad. No, no. Been talking about ballot access more than, I've been talking about ballot access more this year than I've ever spoken about it, even when I was running and trying to get ballot access. More people are concerned about it. More people want to talk about it. More people care about it than ever. And I would argue, and you might disagree, ballot access is the most important thing right now in electoral politics, more than anything else. No, but what about Medicare or what about? None of that gets changed if we don't have ballot access. Why? Because that's how people have to respond. What Mike said earlier, no sound bites allowed, is correct. If we don't show them fear, they won't do anything, right? They won't, why would they don't have to? Hillary Clinton has had a good idea in decades, if she's ever had one, but in decades. Well, you don't have to. I just yell other guy bad. If we get ballot access to where now they'll be afraid to where gerrymandering begins to fail because ballot access breaks gerrymandering, right? To where now open primaries aren't required because now you have better ballot access. So now I have different choices. To where now people can see who cares about what. To where you can make specialized parties. And Blue Moon, you know, you're in New York. You remember Jimmy McMillan and his The Rent is Too Damn High party. Some of you may remember him too. He had the black suit. And he had the white beard and the white gloves. And he would say, the rent's too damn high. That guy was never going to win. However, every time he's on a debate stage, what are you talking about? The rent and how damn high it is. Yes. So that we create specialized parties, right? Parties are what you care about. You want Medicare for all? Make a Medicare for all party. Every time that person's on a debate stage, we're talking about Medicare for all. It doesn't happen now. In fact, now we don't do debates anymore. Yes. That's why I care. Again, you may disagree. That is why I care. If we can't fix this, nothing can be fixed. Nothing can be fixed without this. This is the key. This is the key. Mike goes on to say, notice all the personal attacks. No validation of their candidate approved political affiliation. Yes, it's all. And they're actually attacking us too, Mike. If you would even imagine voting for a third party, well, you're a baby. Can't even imagine it. I'm not saying everyone has to. Again, if you're status quo, I get why you wouldn't. But you're a baby? Come on. Don says, they cannot run on how good their candidate is. All they have is not as bad as the other guy. Exactly. Look, Don, I know I killed that guy. But that guy, Louis, he killed three guys. Come on, you vote for a murderer or a mass murderer? You vote for me, I'm just a regular murderer. That's literally what they're saying. It is really bad, 100%. Yes. So, all right. Um, <clears throat> let's grab some more. Fiori says, I say we kick it old school. All candidates have to battle with swords and axes. Last one standing wins. Not the founding fathers intended, but that's one way to thin up the tyrants. Well, yeah, but I got to tell you, have you seen Kennedy do some push-ups? RFK is going to win that battle. I'm just saying he's going to win that battle. Absolutely. Don was going to say, Chase Oliver, president. I think Chase is a great guy. I love Chase. I've seen him, met him multiple times. Great guy. I, wouldn't, I would not be an unhappy. I would not be unhappy at all. So, yes. Russ says, voters under 50 do not want to vote for a candidate for president that is 70 or older. The youth, you are right, Russ. The youth is really against this. They are the ones going, no, no. And the other part, and... Perfect timing, Don, you brought up Chase Oliver. Chase talks about this if you ever hear him talk in his, um, in his stump speeches. Chase will say that Gen Z is more active than Gen X was at this age and more active than millennials were at this age. So Gen Z is more active politically. They vote more. They vote, I mean, less compared to the, 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 the older generation. The boomers vote no matter what. But relatively... Gen Z is voting more and more, right, by percentage compared to the others at the same time. So I do think that is a difference. And it may affect a lot of people. I agree. I agree completely. So let's see if I can grab this if I could. All right. Um, Joe says, Lars Mapp said it was the LP candidate in another um, Wall Street Journal poll I saw today. He has been in the most polls, hands down. Yes. He's raised the most money, right? 
he's been out there. He's most active. He's the one doing, um, he's the one who's doing um, um, uh, ads, commercials. So yeah, makes sense. They, they see him as the front runner. It makes total sense. I agree. Yep. All right. Um, let's see here. Dave says, Nebraska is doing it tonight. Biden would like to revoke in Omaha, but Maine can retaliate. Yes. All I'm saying is, let, let that go to an independent candidate. That's what I want. Let that go to an independent candidate. Yomir says, liar for governor. Yes, but get me some damn ballot access so I can do it. Right? Kurt says, contingent election of 1824 caused much chaos. It's true. Jackson was the popular choice. But because the four candidates all ran short on electoral votes, the contingency won John Quincy the presidency. As a result, he was hated by the public despite doing a decent job. Same may occur now. Hold on, wait a minute. There were four candidates? That's impossible. There's always only been two, right? No. No. That is a new thing that we made up. We didn't, that the parties made up. That's a new thing. Political parties are not in the Constitution. They're not. Let me be very clear. <clears throat> Our current system that you call democracy is at stake. It is, but not for what they tell you. We don't have a democracy now. Two private companies run our electoral system. Democratic Party, Republican Party, they have private companies. I'm not making this up. The Supreme Court has said so. The Supreme Court, when Bernie was mad at Democrats in 2016, he sued them, went to the Supreme Court. Supreme Court said, no, Democratic Party is a private organization. It has no obligation to give you a fair election. None. It can select who they want, how they want, any way they want. And I actually don't mind that. That's not a bad ruling in theory, meaning do I, I don't care if a private company does what it wants. I agree. The problem is they now control our elections because the states have allowed them to control our elections. They print the ballots up. They decide who's on the ballot. They decide who, the right, who you can vote for. They decide who's an appropriate write-in. Think about that for a second. They decide if you, if you can write somebody in or not, if they're going to count it. How dare them do that? And judges, again, have failed us so many times. Our judiciary in this country is a damn embarrassment. They have failed us again. How can you say that if I write somebody in, you don't count it? Isn't that the basic? Isn't that the Constitution? Nope, not anymore. Parties decide everything. And Kurt, thank you for that. Four of them. Yes, four. It's not the end of the world. We can handle four people. We can handle five people even more. Yes. So hold on so I can do this here. Um, Andrew says, the vote that's wasted is a vote for someone that doesn't represent any of your views. Agreed. Yes. And if we have lots of parties, we can see what we care about because you'll see what happens. I also think ranked choice voting is a good idea. And a lot of you don't like it. I do. Why? Because at least you see what someone's overall, even if they lose, you see their overall. For example, I'll go with the rent's too damn high. The rent's too damn high guy wouldn't have won with ranked choice voting either. But does the red is too damn high guy in the first round get 1% of the vote or 20% of the vote? If he gets 1% of the vote, then people don't really care about the rent. It's not a big deal for people. Most people are not that concerned, not the number one issue. He gets 20% of the vote, 30% of the vote, he still loses. And everyone goes, oh my God, people care about the rent. We got to do something. It forces as literally, as Michael just said, Michael Voss, he's watching, no, no, no sound bites allowed. He just said it. That forces people to do something. Oh my God, 20% of people voted for the, the race to them high guy? I would do something. Joe was responding to me getting kicked off the ballot and he says, I cared. Thank you, my friend. I care too. Yes, absolutely. Frank says, if the election ends in no contest, you could have riots from both the left and the right. Um, maybe. I mean, to be forward, I think we'd have less open fighting if there was a contingent election, if there was a compromise candidate, right? I think we'd actually have less. Don't get me wrong. I think no matter what, people will be pissed off. They're going to say it's rigged. It's all, no matter what, I think that's part's accurate. Frank, I think you're right when it comes to that. It's a level of what will happen. I think if it is an obvious landslide, that is the least amount of violence, in my view. If it's a utter landslide, like a, a Reagan, you know, 84 landslide, right? Then I could see that. Makes sense. I could see them having the least amount because the people who lose, we're like, man, we're done for, right? They would, they'd be disheartened. 
right? So if that happens, I think it's the least. If it's close, I think we have the most to be forward with you. It's, oh, they cheated here, they cheated there. Everyone's going to think they cheated. It's gonna, everyone's going to be mad. Contingent, if one of them pops, if, if it's contingent election and Biden or Trump wins, I think problem. But if there is a compromised candidate, I think not as much because now neither won. So that's just my view. But I think you're right. It's a valid problem either way. So yes. All right. Um, Christine says, the status quo is what's causing this country to collapse. Yes. It is a constant, slow decay. A constant, slow decay. Donna says, glad I finally caught a live program of yours again. Oh, see, every once in a while. Yes, I do do it right. Every once in a while. That's awesome. Nick says, coalition. Hashtag stop 270. I'm in, brother. Let's do it. Co stop 270. I'm in. Let's do it. I 100% think yes. Instant Defense says, do you think Tulsi is playing the game to draw both sides into RFK Jr.? Forget about VP, think of Secretary of State. Huh. So you think Tulsi's not trying to do the Trump thing. This is what I hear from people, that Tulsi is trying to, to play the VP thing. She wants to be Trump's VP versus RFK Jr.'s VP. I, I don't know. Um, I think it's possible. I, I, I don't know, though. That's a gamble. I mean, you, you say you didn't want it. You talk about how much you'd be happy to be Trump's VP, and you somehow come back to RFK Jr.? I, I'm not sure. That, that, that seems like a stretch to me. I, I'm not sure I buy that. I think, I, look, I have no inside information here, to be very clear. I have no inside information. Tulsi has not told me anything. She, her team hasn't called me in years. I've talked to her, I talked to her team years ago, back when she was considering running in 2020. Since then, we haven't really talked much at all. And I don't really talk to her. I've talked to her team in the past, but not to her. So I have no inside information here. My gut says she would like to be Trump's VP and she thinks Trump's going to win and she wants to be in his cabinet. And if Trump does win, I think he'll put her in his cabinet. I think because she showed loyalty to him. She's been good to him. I think it's not a bad gamble for her to do. If you want to be in the administration, not a bad gamble. Not bad at all. So yes. Christine says, RFK has a lot of Marxist ideals. Can't get behind it. A lot of people agree with you, Christine. I'm still happy he's running. No argument he's running. He has brought more, he has brought more eye, eyeballs to independent parties, to ballot access, um, to contingent election than ever. So if he wasn't running now, we would none of the stuff I showed you would have happened. None of it. It would have been quiet, nothing. So I get what you're saying. I'm not mad. I'm not mad. Patty says, you hear about the man who changed his name to literally anybody else and is running? I think it's in Texas, isn't it? I think it's Texas. I think, it, I th yeah, you're right. Some guy's putting that, see how many votes you can get. That's actually, a, that's actually funny. I like that one. So Steve says, left socials here, like the show. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Socials are, are welcome here. You know they are. Of course. Totally worth it. 100%. Joe says, Saddam Hussein was elected with like 99% of the vote. Very popular. Agreed. Yes. Mike says, look how great the one-party democracy has done for New York State. What other reason can people need to get out and make an informed vote? Yes. Yes. One party does not work. Absolutely. Does not at all. <clears throat> Andrea says, do you think RFK can use the Trump ballot case to gain ballot access? I do think it will help. I do. I think it will help. I think Trump's, I mean, look. I know a lot of people don't want Trump on a ballot. I get it. If you don't like him, you think he's bad. I get it. All I'm saying is Trump should be on the ballot like everyone else should be. And so should Bobby Kennedy. They should all be on the ballot. Yes. I'm, I'm, I may be a libertarian, but I still have enough common sense and caring that, yes, everyone should be on the ballot. And I think Trump's case will help when the lawsuits come. The lawsuits will always come. I know I've been part of them. And they suck. Yes, absolutely. I got a bunch of people coming in, and I want to get more. But before I do that, guys, if you're watching on Twitter, please retweet this. Click that like button. It does matter. Please click it. Every little like button does matter. You can super chat me if you want. I'm going to grab a couple of those now, too. You can become a member if you want to. If you really want to support this show so I can keep doing more of this, every membership counts. YouTube membership is $4.99. Click that join button. Hook me up. I'm smarter than half these people. Come on now. And good looking on top of it. And I have a cool bunker. Come on. Win, win, win. That's worth five bucks a month, isn't it? Do that. Or if you really love me, and I know some of you do, head over to Patreon. Patreon's 10 bucks a month. That's another way of saying you love me. It's more expensive. So go for it or not. It's fine. 
I'm not fighting you. It's so good. Or the free part, like that part's free. I like that one. Very good. All good. So let me grab a super chat if I could. Ten dollars. Thank you, Juan. I appreciate it. Any reference to political parties should be removed off the ballot. We badly need ballot access reform. You know this part. I, thank you for this, Juan. This is actually brilliant. Why would you need to put a political party on it? If you want to be fair, no political party, just the names of the people. This way, you have to do your damn homework or don't vote for the person, right? Or, or the way it used to be. Remember, political parties and ballots being printed is a new thing. They didn't print ballots before. You just walked in and you wrote down the person's name, and they had to they had to literally just go go ahead and do it. They had to, they had to, they had to count it. So, how did you know who to vote for? Well, that's why you had party infrastructure then, right? You join a political party, you'd go to some rally at some weekend or something, or maybe church or wherever you were going, and they would say, hey, our guy running is, you know, whatever, Lou Smith, go vote for Lou Smith, he's our guy. And you go, okay, Lou Smith. And you walk in and you write Lou Smith and you'd be done, right? That's how it worked. So, or now if checking boxes, don't have a name, don't, don't have a, um, they have something in Kentucky, I think it is, and a couple of the states which is called, oh, let's see if I can read it right, straight ticket voting. The most unconstitutional thing I've seen in voting in a long time. For those of you who don't live in that kind of state, what that means is you just press Republican. You will all Republican candidates. Democrat, all Democratic candidates. Literally just destroys free thought. And people thought, that's a good idea. Why? Because it's part of their system. Juan, you were correct. No, no party should be on the ballot, just the name. You know the person or you don't. You did your homework or you don't. Or your talking head told you what was right. Or your talking head didn't. I'm okay with all of those. I completely agree. Yes. So, all right. So if I can grab some more of these if I can. All right. Um, Juan says, just go off a virtual town hall with Mike Tremont. My first question and last question was about ballot access. We need to be in the ballot, period. Yes. Thank you, my friend. Yes. Absolutely. 100%. So <laughs> that's very good. Um, See, David says, I believe we won't see any meaningful change until conservative and liberal activists work together to overthrow the Republican and Democratic establishment. Ooh. David, you bring up a very valid. This is, oh, you guys, my, my chat is so good. You guys are so good. Most people who are on one side think the other side is all the same, right? So if you lean right, you think, oh, Democrats are the same. They're all just liberals or whatever, right? You don't see any difference between leftists or liberals, or Democrats, or if you lean right, you go, oh, these conservatives are all the same. You don't see the conservatives or, or Republicans. You don't see any difference between rhinos, MAGA. You don't see any difference between any of them. They're all the same to you. And the reality is your point. A lot of people lean left or lean right without being really part of the Democratic Republican Party in reality and the establishment. And if we were stronger, you could find more coalitions. And something else that you hear me talk about all the time, single issue coalitions. So critical. David, you are correct. If we could do that, we change everything. If you could actually have single issue coalitions, right? You could change it all. Because now I could just, I could do, I could, we could get the thing done, right? Roger Meadows is often on the, watching the show and he brings up the idea of, um, of uh, ballot initiatives, right? Where citizens can vote on things on the ballot. I love that idea. That creates single issues, right? And you see it happens often, right? You see it happens often. If you were to put a ballot access, I mean, a ballot access, a ballot initiative uh, on the uh, citizen ballot initiative on, on, on uh, New York State for school choice, it would win. New Yorkers overall across the state want school choice. They absolutely do. The system doesn't want it because the teachers union controls all the politicians. So we can't work together because there's no ballot initiative in New York State. We had that, it would change. I completely agree. It'd be a great way of doing things. I, I do like that, that concept completely. I think, I think you're right. Yes. I'm going to go with yes on that one. All right. So many more um, comments. I will try to grab some more of these if I can. All right. Um, Donna goes on to say the whole system is corrupt. Yes. Yes. Patty says, so Larry, how do we get people to understand we can change the vote now? I think it's happening slowly, Pat. The problem we have is so many people run once and quit, do something and stop. I'm the idiot who doesn't stop. <laughs> That's what it is. We need more idiots like me, Patty, to not stop. I think eventually it has to happen because, and this is, I guess, also to a point, I forgot who else brought this up, the idea that it's a protest vote, right? 
if you don't give people the ability to be heard, they will become violent. That's how it works, right? That's how it works. If you don't give people the ability to be heard, they will become violent. That is simply human nature. Let's give people the right to be heard. The more we do it, the better, right? The more we do it, the better, 100%. So, all right, um, let's go and grab some more of these. All right. Um, um, Austin says, I got you think what you think, Larry, my goal is complete, but no, I agree with your thoughts, but I always keep seeing similarities between the U.S. and the Weimar Republic. Yes, there are similarities. I agree 100%. And for those of you who don't know, the Weimar Republic was uh, Germany in between the end of World War I and Nazi Germany, about 1919 to about 1932, give or take, in that area. If, um, I'm, I think it's about right in that area. That, that's called the in-between uh, wars years. And um, that was basically what it was. So yes, thank you for that, uh, Austin. I appreciate it. So, all right. Shelly says, when there is no debate, there's no true choice. Also true. You are also correct. Yes. So Joe was going to say, I was politically active when I was 20 something. I was not, Joe. I was bad. I was worrying about like chasing the ladies and stuff like that. I was a Marine back then. I was, no, I was not concerned. I did vote every four years though. I actually vote. Uh, for those who don't know, if you're, if you're in the military overseas, and I was, you can vote in elections, but you vote through um, uh, an FPO. It's a fleet post office. Um, you vote through that by mail. And I only voted every four years because I didn't think I knew enough to vote the other one. So I only voted every four years. I voted, uh, yeah, 88. If it was my first vote, then that's right, 88. So yes. So that's when I, I voted then. Otherwise, I, I didn't vote until I got back to the States. And then when I was there, I physically voted in the States. I voted in New York, obviously, when I was in New York. I was in Virginia, born in Virginia, um, and that's it. So that's that's where I was um, registered. No, I'm sorry. When I was in Virginia, I used my mom's address, and I still voted in New York. I did not vote in Virginia. I was living in Virginia, but I felt like a New Yorker still. So I used my mom's address, and I voted in New York under her address when I was uh, here, stationed in Virginia. So there we go. All right. Uh, Andrea says, if I want to write in Larry Sharp in Illinois, that should be my choice. I agree. You should. I Agree. Yes. Joe brings up a very important part. Why are private parties of my government taxpayer funded ballots and voter registration? Yes. And I'll go one step further. If you're going to tell me that they're private companies, Democrat, Republican Party, private companies. OK, I'll buy it. They don't have any desire or any obligation to give me a free election within their party. OK, I'll buy that, too. But then why are we paying for the primaries? Why do I have to pay for that? It's a private organization. Pay for their own primaries. Find your own reason. Find your own way. Pay for your own primaries. Why am I, not a member of the Republican or Democratic Party, paying my taxpayer dollars for your primary? Why? I shouldn't, I shouldn't have to. It's a private company, right? And again, I'm okay with that. But then how come I have to pay for this? That is my problem. That's my problem. John says, Larry, lots of love, lots of love. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yes. Kevin says, Tulsi was the only Democrat not to vote to convict Trump the second time. I think she's looking for that Trump love. I think she is. And look, if I'm looking to move ahead, I'm looking to stay relevant, it's not a bad bet for her. I'm not saying I would do it. I, obviously, I, I'm not, I don't care about that kind of thing. But I'm saying, if that's your goal, not a bad move, right? I think it might pay off for her. And I say before, right? I said before, Mike Pence, Back in 2016, I was saying, and I was like, this guy's the smartest guy in the room. He's the savviest guy in the room. I was like, oh, it's so stupid. I'm trying to be, he was governor of Indiana. Why would he want to be, you know, Donald Trump's VP? I'm like, smartest, savviest guy in the room. I'm telling you, watch. And what happened? Dude's vice president, popper now, goes to speak, gets you know, 30, 40, 50 grand to go speak someplace. I wish somebody paid me 50 grand to go say, I say this and I get nothing. Mike Pence goes and speaks, gets 40 grand. S savviest guy in the room. And I think Tulsi might be the same one. That's just my view. I could be wrong. Absolutely. She could be the best one in the room. Absolutely. So, all right. Um, let's see here. Uh, Mike says, if RFK is big because of third parties or the other way around. Oh, is RFK big because of third parties or the other way around? Given the political environment, I think third party way was inevitable. The question is how close to grabbing victory percentage, but what happens in 2028? You bring up a lot of good points here, Mike. Um, the first thing is, I think it was a combination. 
I think if RFK Jr. had somehow won the primary as a Democrat, right, if that had happened, I don't think third parties would have got anywhere near the amount of, uh, of, of press. However, we fall with you. RFK is an amazing Democrat. If he was Democrat, it'd be a better Democratic Party. Better Democratic Party. Tulsi Gabbard, much better Democrat. If she was Democrat, much better Democratic Party than Joe Biden and Hillary Clinton. But I think if he had won, I think you're right. It wouldn't have been that big. Would there have still been a third party push? I think yes. So I think Cornel West would have run, Joe Stein would have run, Libertarians to put somebody out there. So I think it would have, would have been some, but nowhere near as big, right? Nowhere near as big. Also, if, if RFK Jr. had stayed in the Democratic Party and just not run and said, oh, okay, I guess Biden beats me and not run, again, it would have been bigger because we would have had Trump Biden again. So it would have been bigger, but still not as big. You combine the two, that's where it explodes. The combination explodes. That's the real piece. The combination explodes. So I do think it's, it's both. If that makes it sense, if that makes sense, I think it's both. Donna says, I agree. Everyone should be in the ballot. Look, when California has their recall, they have like 100 people in the ballot. And somehow it still works. People in general are smart enough to be like, oh, there's six people on it. Okay. Yes. Absolutely. So Joe brings up the uh, straight ticket voting. I think, I think that's why Amash went back to ours. Yeah, straight ticket voting is crushing us and blatantly unconstitutional. And of course, judges said it's fine. Again, you're telling me that these are private companies. Okay, I will buy that. So how does a private company get to press the button and get all their votes on my public, in theory, taxpayer-funded ballot? How is that okay? Blatantly unconstitutional, blatantly wrong, and judges went, okay, no worries, because our judges in our country are terrible. They're an embarrassment. And they proved that to me weekly. They proved to me how much our judges are just part of the system, don't check, do checks and balances at all, don't care, just sit back and fail constantly, just constantly. It is really <laughs> so bad here. Yes, absolutely. So anyway, that is definitely a piece of it again. So Christine says, yes, 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 on single issue coalitions. So good. Yes, I wish more people got it. Yes, so good. So good. Mike goes on to say, at Larry Sharp, public forgets that 40% of the nation is independent slash unaffiliated. Dem slash for pubs, about 20-ish percent each. So America is not bound to party, but power is. Ooh, I like that. Power is bound to the parties, not the people. That's true. Yes, absolutely. So Donna says, that's why we love you, idiot. Yes, I am. A, I'm a lovable idiot, Donna. I am. I'm a lovable idiot, 100%. I am definitely a lovable idiot. That is true. 100%. Yes, that's very good. So Rick says, if you don't vote for Biden, it's a vote for Trump. If you don't vote for Trump, it's a vote for Biden. So my vote counts twice or three times. Rick, three times. Three times. Your vote counts for Biden, and your vote counts for Trump, and it counts for whoever you actually voted for. So you get, actually get three votes. You get three votes. That's how that works. You get three. I know. So yes, <laughs> I love that. Yes. Shelly says, if there aren't any good libertarian candidates, I say we all write in Larry no matter what state we live in. It really hit the news. I appreciate that. I do, but please vote for your actual third party. Shelly, I love you. I love it. Please vote for your third party. Obviously, I like libertarians, but you vote for who you want. I know some of you don't like libertarians who are watching. It's fine. I'm asking all of you listening, all of you watching. It's a serious request. I'm not joking when I say this. Please vote non establishment party. It matters. Mike Voss told you here, and he's right. The more non-establishment party votes we get, the scarier they get, the more we'll get some real change. Whatever you want. You want stuff more left. You want stuff, stuff more right. Doesn't matter. You have to start voting non-establishment. Don't let them do this to us. Stop. It's very important that you vote third party, no matter what it is. No matter what. Pick the one you want. Obviously, I'm a libertarian, so I'm biased. It's fine. You might be biased too. I don't care. Just don't vote Democrat or Republican. Please don't. If you do, you are falling for it. Don't let those guys teach you, oh, you're a baby. You're stupid. You got to sack up or whatever stupid shit Clay Travis said, right? Another idiot like all the rest of them. Another, another, another hack who's doing just fine now, right? I'm sure it wasn't that way when he was struggling, but now they're all making money. They're all privileged. All of a sudden now you're dumb if you don't think like them. 
they're smarter than you, right? They're smarter than you. So I'm going to tell you, please vote my way, but I'm not going to call you an idiot if you don't. I'm not going to say that. That's a terrible idea. Steve says, agreed. Vote not on something. Thank you, my friend. Absolutely. Thank you. Christine says, Michigan's very corrupt. The Constitution means nothing, means nothing to them. Christine, you know I live in New York, right? You're not going to try to out-corrupt me, are you? I'm going to beat you on that one, right? I'm just, yeah, I live in New York. I'm going to beat you on that one, right? I'm just saying, I am, I am going to beat you in the corruption. I got you, I got you on that one. Guys, I'm going to ask you again. Please hit the like button if you would. If you're watching on Twitter, retweet this. Please do so. You want to super chat me? You can. You're watching on YouTube. Large type super chat's awesome. You want to help me out? Become a member. 29 per month. Click that join button. It's five bucks a month. And I'm your lovable idiot, as Donna has said. It's absolutely true. Please do any of those things. It's all good. But no matter what, click that like button. I keep saying it because it does matter. It's how things keep moving here. More people see this. It really does matter. Guys, I think I'm going to have a show on Saturday. I don't think I'm going to have one uh, tomorrow. I don't think I will. I think I'm going to have one on, on Saturday, probably. Saturday evening, maybe. And I may be talking about something else that may be fun. I hope so. We'll see. I'm going to let you guys all go. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all very soon.